Hello, everyone. This is Jimmy Cultist, back again with another exploration game video. And today we are covering the most momentous of all subjects, integral doorways. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Because it's easier. We're going to need it anyway. Now you may be wondering, what do I mean by an integral doorway? It's really quite simple, but I'll, I'll explain in a bit. It looks good. Turn on the studio lighting. Yes, that's precisely what we need. But basically, if you've ever played a game like... Um, Resident Evil, where you enter a room and there's like a little loading screen or a cutscene where you enter the door. That's essentially what I'm creating. It's also a way of traversing a level, you know, within dreams without loading in a new space or a new scene. Because sometimes you really don't want to do that. Sometimes you don't want to have to add a new scene. I think we can maybe correct the boards. We'll just go ahead and copy these ones out so that it matches better. It's a little bit different from a level doorway. It's a good way to make the level feel bigger if you want to stay within, you know, within the boundaries of what you've created in a single scene. We're gonna be a little bit, uh, what is the word? Conservative with our new room that we're creating. We don't want it to be, uh, something that will take a lot of time. So, we're gonna have to be fast about this. The reason why is I think this is a rather complex subject. And I don't want to waste your time with unnecessary trifles, such as making the room look nice. It's enough just to know this handy secret. And we'll need a light real quick, so I'm going to dupe this out. It's not going to look very nice again. But this is just for the sake of demonstration. Now we're going to need a little invisible brick. Preferably a green one, at least that's my personal personal delight, I don't know. I have some idiosyncrasies when it comes to how I like to make things in dreams, but it's not necessary for you to make it green. I would say it's good to have it tall though, because you want it to be where the puppet is going to be standing. It's going to operate as sort of a measuring stick, I would describe it is it's also going to be non-collidable and invisible as most of our logic mounts are which is what this is going to be serving the purpose of it's basically just going to house a microchip on its surface we're going to make it a flag that seems about right and we're going to maybe label it a uh, door I think. Now this could get a little complex, but basically what we're going to want is the age-old friend of logic, the trigger zone. And it's going to want to only detect friends, and it's going to be set to label. As is customary so far, some of these things get rather redundant and I don't have much to say about them because they're just, you know, that's the way it is. That should be good. We'll pull it in here. That's, that's probably a little better. Actually, let's go ahead and pull this brick in so that we have a better idea of where it should rest in the doorway. And one minor thing we're going to want to do real quick is our puppet is going to need to have this little thing turned on, this follow function. 
we're going to turn this down. This is the inner radius. This is basically how close he needs to be to something before he reaches it and stops walking. It's kind of like a fall off zone. But uh, we're going to go with a tag labeled, uh, what is the word? Go here and make sure that this is spelled exactly as you want it because it's going to be important to the logic that we match these two things up. I'm also going to shut off this cutscene box because we don't really need that anymore. And now we're going to just use a little node, stick this right in here, and a not gate to prevent playback. And you may be asking, what playback are we trying to prevent? The playback of a timeline. A timeline labeled play once, well not labeled, set to play once in the playback mode. And we're going to stick a little switch on it because of course... This is how you limit instant playback. Otherwise, you know, you're going to have the trouble where you're constantly triggering it by accident over and over again. It just pays to be safe, as they say. We're also going to make this timeline a certain color, so that it's very distinctive. This will make more sense why later. We're also going to name it Enter. But it's, we're going to have a couple timelines on this thing, and we want to be able to tell the difference between them, because they're very important. And we're going to have a tag labeled Go Here. And all of it's going to do is make us walk into this darkened space, which will basically create the level transition. Well, it's not really a level transition, it's actually just teleporting from one place to another, but you get the idea. And we're going to have a camera set to cut, although you could have it set to smooth as well. I think I will have it set to smooth. That seems a little bit more... I don't know, it just feels more pleasant. We're going to have it kind of zoom in a little bit. This is just going to operate as our basic, you know... crossed into the border sort of thing. You're entering another dimension, not of sight and sound, but of mind. And we're going to have a little handy dandy switch right here, which we're going to make blue for distinctive purposes. And that should do it nicely uh, as far as this particular thing is concerned. We're going to go ahead and copy out this logic, just for convenience. We're not going to need this, though. We are going to need this, and we're going to be naming it Exit. So we're going to be making it red. Now, basically, what we're doing here is this is going to be the cutscene for when you're entering a door, and this will be the cutscene when you're leaving. And once you have both of these things built, we're going to create two separate doorways that connect to each other, and I'll show you how to do that. It's just more convenient at the moment to copy out this logic for later, even though we haven't necessarily set up a lot of these principles just yet. We're going to copy Go here. And instead, we're going to change it to uh, player telly. I'm going to go check the pig just to make sure that our teleporter is properly labeled. Player telly. It's capital T. So, this technically wouldn't have worked unless we capitalize the T. Always keep this stuff in mind, it's important. Anyway, he'll be right there. And we're gonna have the go here label. 
So that he walks out, you want it pretty far out so that it'll walk beyond this zone. Speaking of this zone, you may be wondering, well, how are they going to keep that from being triggered? All we got to do is lengthen the switch on this enter. On this enter thing right here. Anyway, all you have to do to correct the issue of how you will prevent the player from triggering this zone is to extend this switch here because the switch prevents playback. Even if the zone is being set off, it won't be able to trigger. And if you have enough time on this on this timeline, it won't really matter because once you're outside the trigger zone, it'll no longer be active and thus it won't be playing this enter cutscene anywhere. So that should be good. And we're gonna make sure, okay, Go here is in the proper position, Player Teller is in the right position, we won't really be needing this, and we won't really be needing a wiper either. And I think this might just about do it. We're gonna go ahead and put this here, door two, just to make it easy to tell the difference. Oops. And this little blue switch is going to be connected to this node. I guess you could make these nodes blue if you wanted to uh, be consistent. Might make it easier on the old memory bean, also known as the brain. And we're just going to move this over here with precise move. And since it's got all the logic mounted to it, all the positions and everything should be stable. All right. Speaking of which, let's make sure there's nothing important in here. Go ahead and delete these. The only reason why I have them is because, you know, the asset had them earlier that I copied. But with luck, this should work as we intend. It did not work as intended, as intended, I should say. There were a couple of other things that I noticed that I don't like, which is... I feel like we didn't go far enough in the doorway. I would like it much better if we went all the way to the back. And there seems to be some problem where we're accidentally triggering this thing improperly. Pull back the go here tag. I don't think we need to be going that far back when we are entering or whatever. This seems to be far enough out. Oh, I think I know what it is, though. Basically, what we have going on is, even though we're shutting off that trigger zone over there, this one is still active. So the simple solution is just to go here. We're going to make this switch red so we can tell the difference. Go into the exit switch and stick it right there in the not gate. And we're going to do the same over here. Make it red for memory's sake and stick it in the not gate of enter. And that should prevent our little issue from occurring, hopefully. Also, we're having one little tiny issue, which is I forgot that we need a different camera for our exit screen. I'm just going to go ahead and set it to cut, because we're going to have an instant transition. Same here. I would go ahead and delete this and just set this to cut. And we should be good, should be golden. All right, let's go ahead and try it. One thing I don't quite like is he's coming out a little bit before our wiper is ending. 
Let's set the wiper lower. Well, yeah, maybe not. Eh, we'll set the wiper lower. But also, we'll do one other thing. We're going to set our go here tag just a little bit forward so that it doesn't instantly trigger. That way there's kind of a feeling that, you know, he's not just instantly walking out. There's kind of a delay. It may look better in practice. Let's see. I think that's pretty good. Another thing that might help is if we... Uh, Take our player Teller, and we put him more toward the back. Put him more toward the back of this uh, this doorway. And the reason why this will be better is because it'll kind of um, give him more time to walk out, and it'll make it feel more natural. It's a little bit too abrupt currently, I think. It's a, it's a matter of balance, really. See, that's better. I also kind of might put some fog in there to sort of obscure him when he's, uh, you know, when he's in there. Let's go ahead and make it real dark. I feel like it might look better if you can't see his body just abruptly stop at the back. These are minor details, not entirely important. But yeah, that's how you can instantly uh, traverse to another area inside the level through a doorway. Similar to Resident Evil, which I know isn't an exploration game, but I feel like this could come in handy for an exploration game, you know. I may do a survival horror, you know, thing in the style of Resident Evil kind of tutorial, just how to make that sort of game with the tank controls, I don't know, all that stuff. It might be interesting to do someday. I don't know if we have time for all of these different concepts, but I would like to cover as many different games as possible because Dreams really is capable of doing a lot. But hopefully you found that helpful. We're going to give a quick thanks to our monthly supporters on Coffee. They're going to come out of this black doorway. Oh my. There they go. And that's all. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to ring the notification bell so you never miss another video. If you wish to support our earnest insanity, you can check the links in the description to donate or buy merch. Until next time, goodbye.